Last night on Raw, during the Superstar Shake-Up, the War Raiders, also known as War Machine, outside of the WWE walls, debuted as the Viking Experience. Now, there's no two ways about it. That is a very bad name. It doesn't make any sense and does sound like a show you'd see on the Discovery Channel. And after watching said show, you'd be like, oh, well, Vikings, they really like to flub shiz up. And I guess in that sense, it kind of does work if you're talking about a pair of wrestlers because Vikings used to go out there and just destroy everyone. And that's basically what you have to do if you want to be a good professional wrestler. It caused quite the reaction on social media as Twitter and Reddit just blew up. And I get it. I truly do. I laughed when I heard it, especially because Michael Cole used the term as if it's something that had been around for years. Now, I think I'm pretty much quite well up on my WWE programming, and at no point has anybody ever called these two people the flipping Viking experience. So we are going to play devil's advocate as we do here on the Y series and look at both sides of the coin and also address what a lot of people have been saying to me, which is calling them the Viking experience must mean that Vince McMahon has lost his mind. Why? Here's why. Right, I'll give you my honest personal take, which is, I don't think it's all that bad, but I say that because of The Big Show. What I mean by that is, the first time I heard the name The Big Show, my brain actively left my head, it left my body, because it didn't want to have to try and figure out what the hell that meant. As a name, The Big Show is grammatically all over the place. But today, right now, it just is what it is. It's like that Red Universal title. When the Red Universal title was first rolled out, people went absolutely ballistic, because it looked so disgusting, but now, it's just the Universal Championship. It's red, the color of blood. This is what will happen with Hanson and Row 2, or Ivar and Eric, as I should call them now. And yeah, we're going to address that. But if they go on to have one hell of a tag team run within the WWE on either Raw or SmackDown, soon we'll just be calling them TVE and we'll all be cool with it. We'll just be happy that they're running rampant on the main roster. Poor new fans will have to go through that rigmarole, but at the end of the day, we'll all arrive at the same place. And I understand, I get it. Vince McMahon probably doesn't want thousands of people shouting war, war at one of his shows because he thinks it looks bad and he's trying to appease his sponsors. If I met Vince McMahon and he said, Simon, these were my reasons, I go, oh, Vince, I can understand where you're coming from and then question why that's how our relationship started with a random conversation about the Viking experience. But hey ho, that's just what happens when you meet Vince McMahon. And again, even with that said, you still probably shouldn't have called them the Viking experience. I don't even have to explain why. The Viking experience. Do not forget though, this is the same company that wanted to call Stone Cold Steve Austin Frosty McFreeze. So I kind of just accept that the occasional bad name is going to come down the pipe. The real issue I think is what it means for NXT. If these two guys had come out from the cold and they were known as this, we'd probably snigger a little bit, but we'd leave it there and we'd get on with our day. It's wrestling and wrestling is nuts, but given that the whole presentation has now shifted, it's like buying into whatever we did down in Florida was just one giant waste of time. Hanson and Row, as they were no down in developmental, have been absolutely smashing it. And if you were a fan of this pair, you were probably quite excited to see, oh my gosh, look, they've made it up to Monday night. And then you find out all of it has been flushed down the loo. And then you have the realization that WWE and NXT, despite being the same company, don't lock together at all. It's like they exist in different, ironically, universes. That's why Ivar and Eric, or however you pronounce it, are the real sad part here. Because you're trying to tell me that not only have they changed their team name, but individually they decided to change their own names as well. I mean, what am I meant to do with that? What am I meant to take away with it? What is the reasoning? What happened to Hanson and Roe? Why are they now Ivar and Eric? And does that mean within the story world, they're separate from the people that I have seen down in NXT? And what happens now when I tune into that show, which version am I gonna get? And when you've got all that in your brain, and then you get told, oh yeah, also, we're gonna call them the Viking experience, the whole thing crumbles, and you're allowed to cry while shaking on the floor. It also takes a team who are very good and ahead of the curve in many ways and makes them a bigger cartoon than they already were. And the fact they're called Ivar and Eric, which WWE probably got by going to Google and typing in, oh, I need some Viking names, 
doesn't help either. It's all very poorly thought out, and if there's one thing we need to do when calling people up, it is exactly that. Instead, what we've done is we've made them literal Vikings. While they obviously played on that very heavily down on NXT, right down to their over-the-top entrances, it is these small little things that make the world of difference. It's gone from a gimmick to asking the crowd to accept that in 2019, we actually have two dudes who are meant to be Vikings. I mean, according to Michael Cole, they eat raw meat. I mean, what are they gonna do next? Just pillage the nearest village and kill all of its residents? Also, if you wanna throw something on top of that, there is a place in York, England over here called the Viking Experience. I presume it's a tourist attraction of some sort. So all of a sudden, going back to Google, if someone's tubby in the Viking Experience, they're gonna get really confused. Another problem comes in the fact that maybe, just maybe, Vince McMahon doesn't watch NXT. Now, Vinnie Mac doesn't have to watch NXT. I mean, who works harder and who has less time than Vince? But when you take all of this information, it starts to add up, and I don't think it's the best idea. He sees guys that look like Vikings, so they become Vikings. He sees Alistair Black, a creepy, kind of daunting kind of guy, so he adds a creaking sound effect to his entrance, and I'm pretty sure on Raw last night, Ricochet also had a bullet sound effect, you know, because bullets and ricochet. It's as simple as that. And yeah, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I didn't think that creek was all that bad. And I think it's actually something that will grow on me throughout the weeks. But it's when you throw it all into a pot that it adds up. I mean, look at EC3. Why did we bother calling up Ethan Carter III if the only plan we had for him was do nothing on television for a few months and then get annihilated by Braun Strowman. And then there's Eric Young, who we were told has made such a big impact on the main roster, but we know deep down that he's done absolutely nothing. He wasn't even allowed to appear in front of a television camera for about 82 years. And that's not his fault. What is he meant to do from catering? And going back to EC3, what is he meant to do when he's told, yeah, what we'd like you to do today is stand in front of a mirror, spray yourself, and then admire your own body? That is as shallow as those things come. So to summarize, it's not really that they're called the Viking experience, but the fact this transition from NXT to WWE always seems to be handled so poorly. And there are some success stories, there are guys we can look at that have been moved up to Raw and SmackDown and are doing great. I mean, take Elias, he's doing all right for himself. But the further we move down the timeline, the worse it all seems to get. And I will say I do like the fact that more teams have been moved to Raw because we do need to start focusing on that division and the War Raiders or War Machine or the Viking experience will certainly add to that. But you can't ignore how it's made the fans feel, which is why we're talking about it right now. And what does this mean for NXT? Which version of this team do I now get when I tune in to that programming in a few weeks? You know, they take delay and stuff, so eventually we'll get back to the live shows. I mean, didn't they just win some kind of tournament? Aren't they the tag team champions? It's all so confusing. The last thing we can do is have the same people that now just have different names because that would be too bizarre. That's my limit. That's my wrestling limit. I can't tune into something that I've watched week in, week out, recognize two human beings and then be told with no explanation. I know you thought they were called Hanson and Rowe. <laughs> they made a mistake. They're actually called Eric and Ivar. And oh yeah, they're real Vikings. Don't piss them off they will definitely kill you. The real upside to this is how good some of the reactions have been. Laugh out loud content. In most cases, I do enjoy a good wrestling meltdown because you can feel the passion reaching through the screen and just rubbing all over your face. I mean, there are some people out there that now want to, I don't even know, burn WWE HQ to the ground just because we have the Viking experience. The ironic thing being there, is that what a Viking would do? If a Viking was mad and a Viking wanted to get revenge, they'd probably go and burn some stuff to the ground just to iterate and draw a line under it. Don't go do that. Don't burn nothing down, you ain't Seth Rollins. The point is NXT is never gonna be able to fulfill its potential or what it was built to do until we iron out these issues. And this latest one is probably gonna sting a little bit, mostly because it's gonna be chucked into your eyes for at least the next couple of months. You're gonna hear the Viking experience a lot. You'll get used to it, you'll calm down, but you still have to accept that the War Raiders, that War Machine, are now going to be the Viking experience. Rated PG only on the USA Network. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the Viking experience 
And I think I can already guess, I hate the Viking experience. The Viking experience is the worst name I've ever heard. I'm never gonna watch WW anymore because of the Viking experience. Viking experience, damn you, you ruined my life and so on and so forth. Like, share and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com. There is some articles up there about the Viking experience, including a Y article written by the one and only Michael Sidgwick. And make sure you follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And you're here on What Culture Wrestling. Go watch more YouTube videos, including Ups and Downs from Raw, where you get my initial reaction to the Viking experience. And I have a meltdown about Ricochet and Alistair Black. Who doesn't want to see that? Everybody. My name is Simon from What Culture. This was the Y series, and I'll reiterate. I know some people probably can't believe it. I don't care. You call them whatever you want. You can call them Spud and Potato for I care, because I know down the line I'm just going to get used to it. I'm more interested in how they're treated. If we can get a War Raiders, War Experience, Viking Experience, whatever the hell, from NXT that I'm used to down there, and I get to see them kick ass on Raw or SmackDown if they move to there eventually, I'll be all right with it. Or just give me a really good tag team feud, even if you do Alistair Black and Ricochet versus the Viking Experience. I know I've seen that down in NXT, but you give, give me a good two month program and it makes the tag team division feel really exciting and really fresh and really important. I'll forgive you for anything WWE to a point within reason, but please allow this superstar shakeup to make the tag teams good again. I mean, you got the Usos on Raw now, the Usos versus the Viking Experience. I'm all right with that because let's not forget, let's never forget they're really skilled, they're really talented, and you know, they do things they're not supposed to be able to do, given they're big guys. Either way, <laughs> the Viking experience. Welcome, my friends. It's a pleasure to have you.